Hello, and welcome to episode 7 of Sir Astero's The Lord of the Rings painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint Gimli from Fantasy Flight Games' The Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth. For Gimli, I wanted to move away from the greens and browns which have featured quite heavily for the other heroes so far, and I've chosen quite a warm, fiery palette of colours to match his aggressive playstyle, tempered by a couple of touches of cooler tones for the chainmail and the cloak. Let's take a look at the painting stages. As usual, I've primed the figure in black, followed with some grey and white zenithal highlights applied from above, although a plain prime in grey or white would also be okay. We'll then apply the base colours, which may include some wet blending for the hair, and as usual, I'll be sticking to the same limited set of paints already introduced in the series. Next, we'll apply a couple of shades to achieve some nice easy definition. We can then complete the miniature with some highlights, many of which are largely optional. I'll also be adding some battle damage and weathering, and as usual, I'll be adding some scenic elements to the base. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the skin using the same colours which I used for Aragorn, which means flat flesh mixed with a little flat brown and some red, although I'm aiming for a slightly more reddish complexion for Gimli. Here I'm adding some water mixed with just a little of the Flow Enhancer introduced in episode 1, which I find helps to speed up the base coating. For the hair, I've chosen to wet blend a dark and light tone to get a nice sense of volume. For the dark tone, I'm using flat brown mixed with a little clear orange, and for the light tone, I'm using yellow ochre. Here you can see me preparing the two tones, each once again thinned with some water and a little flow enhancer. Starting at the back, I'm now placing some of the darker tone into the areas I want to appear more shadowed. I'm now blocking in a patch of highlight with the yellow ochre. We can then give the brush a quick clean and a wipe before blending the tones whilst the paint is still wet. I'm now continuing this process around the rest of the hair. Naturally, we'll be applying some shade here in a while, which will help tie things together. I'm painting the eyebrows just with the darker tone. And I'm now doing a little tidying up with the skin tone. Next I'm going to mix a little flat red into some flat brown. And I'm using this to paint the tunic along with the trousers. For the belt and armoured loincloth, I'm using flat brown, dark and dandy saturated with a little black. A 
I'm also using this for the boots and for the non-metallic sections of the axe handle. And I'm now painting the hands which I missed earlier. For the metallic sections of the axe I'm using silver mixed with a little dark sea blue and some black. I'm also using this for the chainmail. For the armour plating I'm using gold mixed with a little flat brown and some clear orange. I'm also using this for the raised design on the axe. And here I'm using it for the plating on the belt and loincloth. A couple of layers of this may be needed for a solid finish. Finally, after some deliberation, I've chosen to use dark sea blue for the cloak. I ended up applying this in a couple of layers to give me quite a dark, solid tone, which I'll be highlighting up to a more greyish teal colour in a while. With the base colours complete, let's now add some shade. I'm going to start by shading the skin with some Reichland Flesh Shade, which I'm thinning with a roughly equal amount of Lamian Medium. I'm now going to mix an equal amount of Nuln Oil and Agrox Earthshade, along with a little Drukei Eye Violet, which is quite optional, and I'm once again thinning with some medium. I'm using this to shade the hair, as well as the armour plating, tunic, belt, boots and handle of the axe. Here I'm just adding a second layer to the darker sections of the hair. Finally I'm going to create a roughly equal mix of Nuln Oil and Drakenhof Nightshade, also thinned with some medium, and I'm going to use this for the chainmail as well as the head of the axe.
We're now ready to add some highlights and finishing touches. The two most important areas in need of highlights are the skin and the cloak. I'm going to begin by highlighting the skin, mostly by adding white to the original skin tone mix, just like we did with Aragorn. The texture of the skin doesn't need to be especially smooth, especially for a character like Gimli. I've chosen to aim for a more ruddy complexion for Gimli, so here I've decided to glaze some flat red onto the nose and cheek area. And I'm now continuing with the highlights. I sometimes like to introduce a hint of flat green to the lightest tones. At this point I've chosen to draw in the eyes with some ivory. This could have been done at the base colour stage of course, but I chose to wait until after adding the shade, so I can see the contours a little more clearly. And I'm trimming things back with a dark skin tone mix, using the original base colours, but with some additional flat brown and red. And I'm now dotting in some pupils with a dark grey. Notice how I'm bracing my third, fourth and fifth fingers against the holder to keep things as stable as possible. Here I'm adding a few final highlights. My aim with the set of characters as a whole is to ensure that each one has a unique skin tone. For the cloak, I'm going to lighten the dark sea blue base tone with some white, and I'm also adding a little black along the way just to tone down the saturation. If you have a light grey colour, that would of course also be fine. This first layer is going to cover most of the cloak, except for the more shadowed recesses. I'm now lightening the tone further, gradually reducing the area of highlight, whilst focusing more on the upturned portions of the cloak. I'm not spending too long here, as there will be plenty of muddy weathering to go on top in a while.
Here's my brightest tone. For me, Gimli is now looking more than good enough to hit the table, and the rest of the highlights I'd regard as being fairly optional. For the golden plating, I might just bring back a little sparkle with the original base tone of gold mixed with a little flat brown and clear orange. Here I'm just catching the upper edge of these segments. To create some brighter glints, we could mix some ivory into some gold and add this to the base tone. Here I'm using the pure ivory and gold mix for the brightest glints. Finally, I've chosen to use some quite thinned down gold to tie things together and provide a final boost to the metallic reflectivity. Next I'm providing some highlights to the reddish leather by mixing some yellow ochre into the flat brown and red base tone in a couple of stages. Is my lightest tone. For the dark brown leather, I'm also going to add some yellow ochre to the original base tone. I'm now also mixing in a little white to prevent things becoming too yellow. This can also be used to add a few highlights to the handle of the axe. For the head of the axe, I'm going to mix the same range of tones we used for Aragorn's sword. This means I'll be mixing some white and some ivory into the original base tone to create my highlights. 
and I'm also adding some black to create a darker tone. I'm going to start with quite a light colour, and I've chosen to create a simple texture for the blade of the axe by adding a series of short lines. We can also provide an edge highlight along the length of the blade. I'm now using the darker tone to push the contrast of the texture. Finally, we can add a few bright spots of highlight using the brightest tone. These lighter tones can also be used to highlight the other metallic sections of the axe. Next I've chosen to add some weathering by firstly applying some thinned orange and brown to the flatter sections of the axe head. This can be built up in a couple of thin layers to your liking. Once dry, I've chosen to add some scratchy textures and edge highlights on top with the light silver tones. I've also chosen to add some blood by mixing a little flat green into some red. Here, for the sake of variety, I'm creating a darker tone by mixing in some black. And for the freshest blood, I might boost the level of red. I'm now going to add some mud splatter by mixing some buff into some flat brown. and I'm now providing some basing paste and cork rocks, exactly as described in episode 1. Whilst that dries, I've chosen to add a few even brighter spots of mud. And here I'm using a mix of yellow ochre and buff to add a few highlights to the top of the head. I'm now returning to finish off the base with a dry brush, some shade, and of course some tufts of grass. And this completes Gimli. Thank you for watching. Please note that in the video description you'll find a link to the complete series, along with all of the places where I can be followed on social media. You'll also find a link to sarastro.com, where you can find PDF guides for the other hero characters in the game. My most sincere thanks go out to my incredible patrons for funding this series. If you'd like to help support future content, then you can become a patron by hitting the Patreon link and pledging what you can.
Join me again soon as we move on to painting the villains of Eriador expansion for the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth. Happy painting!